What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Epic Discussions, where we talk about anything and everything that we want to talk about. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, alongside my good buddy, John. What's up, John? Hey, man. What's up? Nothing much. Getting home, and uh, all I could think about all day was the topics I was thinking about. I was actually really excited this week on what we're going to be talking about. Um, I know you probably have some good ones, so uh, what, what's your first topic? Cool, man. Yeah, me too. Um yeah, I'm really excited. We uh, we have a couple of interesting ones this uh, this week in particular. Uh, well, I wanted to talk about uh, the uh, the directors in Hollywood currently, and probably the last 20, 30 years. You know, your best directors, um, worst directors, and then kind of an interesting third category: best and worst. In the sense that these guys have produced some really good movies and they've also produced some really crappy movies and they're really inconsistent and it's kind of like you watch the movies anyway, even though they're not that great, but I think you know who I'm talking about in some of those right. regards. So, um, yeah, I just thought we would just kind of go back and forth, name a couple of directors in each category and just maybe talk about some of their, um, some of their accomplishments and, you know, for the disappointments, we can talk about that. And then, so, um, the first one I was going to mention, <clears throat> um, one of the best directors, I think, I think we both agree on this, is Christopher Nolan. Ah, uh, you stole mine. Ah, <laughs> uh, really? Okay, I thought you were going to go with Steven Spielberg. That was my next one. So why don't okay, you, well, how about this? You go ahead and take, uh, you can take on Nolan, the Nolan verse, and I'll okay. take on Spielberg. Okay. Well, I, I'll admit, I have not watched uh, one of his earliest films, Memento. I heard it's great. So um, good, man. You're, yeah. you're missing out. That was an absolute must-watch, like literally the whole movie. You'll be confused, but you're the whole yeah. time you're completely engaged on like what a great story this is telling. Yeah, that's that's my last one to watch that that he's released that I I just haven't seen yet. I don't know why, but um, you know I finally just watched the Prestige, amazing movie. I need to see it again because it was just so much to it, so complex and just so much, just so deep. And um, I think that really speaks to his movies in general because they're also um, the 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 plots are really complex. Uh, but not too overly complex to where you can't follow. But they're they're deep. They make you think. They evoke a lot of interpretation. Um, I think probably his his crowning achievement was probably Inception, in my opinion, at least if not one of his best. Um, but everything they do is everything he does is so original. And uh, I know he writes a lot of the movies with his brother Jonathan. And um, I just I have so much respect for this director because. Um, he is professional in the way that he does these films. Um, I've even heard that, like, the way he carries himself around set, he's always wearing, like, a business suit around the set, you know, to look professional. And, like, he just has a lot, there seems to be, like, a lot of class with him. And not an, you know, not an arrogance, but, you know, confidence in what he's doing. And so I think he's one of the best in the field right now. And I, I can't wait to find out. I don't know if you've heard anything about his, any upcoming projects, but, he has an untitled project with his brother he's working on. Yeah, that's all I heard, too. So I'll let you take the next guy. Well, before we go there, uh, yeah. I got to debate, got to debate you on one of those. Oh, okay. I think, and this is probably going to be extremely uh, controversial, but I think uh, Interstellar is his best film. Really? As far as start to finish, um, an original, very original story, and not that its Inception wasn't, but a story that captured my imagination even beyond and inception is one of my favorite movies. Keep in mind. And then we might talk about that a little bit later. <coughs> um, I would say it's right up there um, with, with inception. Um, the reason why I say I, it's funny inceptions are probably my more like, I like it better as a movie for myself, mm -hmm. but when I'm looking at director, I'm looking at um, everything, the filmography, how it's cut, uh, sound, um, shots, all those put together. And it's really hard to beat some of this, the scenes and some of the uh, images and the sound and just all of it put together, just woven perfectly into this beautiful story. And again, I like Inception better as a movie just because of my personal taste, but as a director and the creation of film, I appreciate Interstellar more as a creative feat. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> well, you know, if you think about it, every most films that he's done, he has accomplished some amazing um, 
action sequences and 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 um, uh, what's practical effects. He always uses very little CG in his films, and um, I think it takes a lot of talent to be able to come up with ideas to make this physically work. Like even in Interstellar, in that scene where he's in this like fourth dimensional room, you know. Right. What do you, uh, how do you think of that? You know. Yeah, I mean, exactly, and most of that was practical effects right there. Um, well, and so. I heard he took so much <laughs> care. Like, I don't know, you know, it was his brother's story. He, his brother actually wrote the story. Oh, really? Um, but the cool thing was I, why I appreciated that film so much from a direct director's standpoint is he consulted, like, top-of-their-field scientists on if, this, if we saw a black hole, what would it look like? Right. Uh, what would this look like? How would this feel? And, and that kind of attention to detail – really yeah. to me makes a difference uh yeah. from a, a film to a piece of art yeah yeah i think that's I think that true for all of his films i think he if you look at even inception i mean the the things he addressed about dreams i read a lot of um surprising information about it that is actually fairly you know um accurate i think he went a lot more links with the interstellar but, but yeah i can understand that and I think the only reason that I like in Inception a little more, um, I think it was more of a groundbreaking film in terms of, um, you know, just the the concept of dreams like that, just exploring right. that. I understand there's been other films that have explored concepts of dreams, like The Matrix did a really good job at that. But um, And Hans Zimmer, both times, you'll notice, Interstellar and Inception, he was really responsible for changing – the way some scores are done. Like he, you notice how a lot of trailers and a lot of movies like imitated his, uh, really Dark blasting movie. horn, you know, like from inception trailer, like, you know, that yeah. kind of noise. A lot of movies imitated that afterwards. And for interstellar, <clears throat> I read that Christopher Nolan actually asked him to completely like start from scratch, you know, go back to just a completely different sound. Like he doesn't want it to sound anything like, it, you know, a soundtrack has ever, um, you know, sound before, and he came up with this really interesting, like, um, engaging score that sounds. It's like a bunch of, um, it's like pipe organs and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's just really, really, really amazing how they pull it off. So everything about his movies is is just, it's they raise the bar in creativity and storytelling and everything. So I think he's definitely one of the best, if not the best, out in the field right now. Well, let's go to who I think <coughs> okay. is the master. If there is a master and apprentice, Steven Spielberg uh, is definitely right there equal to him, if not above. I mean, I, that's debatable. I would say Steven Spielberg has the history of filmography work, working for him. He has more films, so I think that's working in his favor. But, I mean, speaking stri uh, strictly as direction, as a director and not a producer or executive producer or anything like that, um, that's what I'm going to focus on here. And I just want to point out, not only is Steven Spielberg one of my favorite directors, but he goes on these spurts of greatness where it kind of will do some more creative, lower budget stuff for a while, and then he'll go boom, 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 and just hit the ground mm -hmm. running with nothing but hit after hit after hit. Yeah. Which brings me to, uh, I just want to point out a, a point in time in which this happened from 2001 to 2005. <laughs> I'm just going to read the direct the major films that he directed and and how important that most people feel these movies are. One of my favorites and often underrated AI artificial intelligence. Really interesting movie, fantastic acting. Um Minority Report. Absolutely fantastic. Um one of my favorite movies. Tom Cruise rocks that movie. Catch Me If You Can. Um another Tom Hanks, Leonardo DiCaprio at their finest. Um, and then the, the terminal, which was another, uh, you know, actually underrated movie and then war of the world. So he had just like hit at every single year, uh, two of those years, he had two movies come out, which is unbelievable yeah. with that kind of budget films. And it's like, you can go into a Steven Spielberg movie for the most part, not just wondering, I wonder if this movie is going to be good. It's almost like you're wondering if it's going to be great instead of just good. Yeah. <laughs> like I walked out of Steven Spielberg's movies never let down as it being a bad movie, but at the worst, it's like, well, that was good, but it wasn't a masterpiece, which most directors would kill 
just to have that kind of command of their craft. Um, and, and of course, you know, in the last, just in the last couple of years, you know, he's working on Indiana Jones right now. Uh, the BFG, even though it didn't do on the box office, the Rotten Tomatoes score is solid. Uh, Lincoln, fantastic movies. And of course, yes. we all know the, we know the classics, you know, your Schindler's List and Jurassic Park, Jaws and E.T. and all the Indiana Jones films. Mm-hmm. Um, it just goes on and on. He's just, he's a master of telling, uh, he's a master of, of adventure stories in my, in my opinion, where you are just the whole movie. You're <coughs> a master of entertainment. Yeah. He's actually two of his movies. Uh, just to give you a preview, two of his movies are on my top five of all time. <laughs> so Let's he's responsible. Have my for that. One. I have two as well. Yeah. Oh man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, that, that'll intrigue me later to see which ones, uh, mm-hmm. Those are, you know what, that actually might be, um, why don't we go ahead, since we're already on the director standpoint, we have both have two of the top ones on the list, why don't we go ahead and do um, topic, the next topic, and it is our top five movies, if you want to get started well, the only thing is, your top five. We haven't, the only thing is, we haven't talked about worst or, like, mediocre directors. Do you want to, do you want to go over any of that? Uh, I can give you an easy worst, M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, what? Falling, falling apart uh, after a few works. good films. <clears throat> it's one of those things. It's like he made, he had like magic in a bottle. I almost feel like he had like a genie that he made a wish for where he said, please give me like three good movies and then I'll do it on my own. And those three good movies went by. And after that, the, the powers went away. And then he just made terrible movie after terrible movie. Just ruined actors' careers. Um, and mediocre directors, I would say your Michael Bay's. People who don't honor their craft of movies um you know but they just kind of they just kind of pour them out they don't they make them they do an okay job it's it's a good movie it's not great uh anyone who makes forgettable movies in my opinion is is just an average director right yeah i would agree the only thing did you by the way did you see the visit i did not see the visit is that the one with the uh, grandparents Mm -hmm. it's good i actually really liked it i thought it i thought he somewhat redeemed himself actually in that movie well, after it I genuinely saw, creeped me out, like it was actually pretty freaky. I gave up after I saw After Earth. <laughs> did you ever see Devil? He produced I, that. He I did. Direct. I hated that movie. Really, I like Devil. The elevator like movie. It. Yeah, you yeah. didn't like it. Mm, Not okay. for me. Um, yeah. Well, I was just going to mention. Uh, I agree about Michael Bay. He's <clears throat> he produces a lot of entertaining films, but I don't necessarily think that they're great. I think they're probably. I think his best was maybe The Rock. Uh, the Rock to me is one of the au- most Which awesome. Is like, 15 years, like 20 years ago now. I know. Uh, yeah, I know. It's crazy. Um, as I was going to say, Roland Emmerich. Roland Emmerich <laughs> has made some of the most entertaining movies. They're not necessarily great, but they're entertaining. Like 2012, Last uh, Day After Tomorrow. Um, the Patriot, I thought was a great movie, but maybe not the best. Um <clears throat> He actually directed that too. Did you know? I, I forgot about that. Um, no, I didn't. I didn't remember that he did that one. I, I, all I can remember at this point about him is the trash heap that was Independence Day. Too. Whatever. You know, I went and saw. On a side note, I went and saw it again while I was visiting my parents. I'm uh, sorry. Over July weekend. <laughs> I actually liked it more the second time. So there you go. There you go. You can hate on it. It's all good. But anyways, and y'all have to excuse me. I'm, I have some kind of thing in my throat. And I just keep having to clear it so sorry if that sounds disgusting um one last good director but not like amazing i would say and i really want to be careful here because he actually is one of the best directors ridley scott he he is solid um he did alien he did black hawk down gladiator um he also did some kind of mediocre films like um gods and kings the exodus movie um i did not care for uh, Kingdom of Heaven was okay, and I didn't see Robin Hood, but I heard it wasn't that great. Um, and Prometheus, Prometheus, one of the most missed opportunities. Um, interesting, but missed opportunity by and large. But 